Hello. It's as if I'm like surprised that I clicked record. Um, good evening or morning, everybody. I will be uh, bringing you today <laughs> a um, another analysis video. Uh, I've got a bunch of games lined up for you guys from uh, all sorts of tournaments over the years. And uh, this one that I'm bringing to you today is from the Canadian National Scrabble Championship uh, in 2016 that I played in. Uh, it's this one right here. Uh, and it was, uh, yeah, tournament that I got fifth in. It's fifth in Canada, not too shabby. And there's a ton of games missing from this tournament that I have failed to, uh, to go over. And one of said games is the one I'm bringing to you today. So uh, cover your eyes if you don't want to see any results. But this is a game against Mike E. Banks. Uh, the first time I'd ever played Mike. Uh, he's a strong, strong Canadian player. And I'm going to also bring up the, uh, the tournament itself. If you still don't want to see what happened, uh, suggest you look away again. But here it is. Uh, Canadian Championship main event. Uh, Adam Logan won, and I got in fifth, came in fifth place. So yeah, that was that, and let's just get straight to the game. Um, I open with a bingo, that's always nice. My play is Ledger. Now I have to remember where I played it. I think I played it here. Ledger. For 72. Um which doesn't appear to be the preferred placement. Actually, this uh, Quackle has a little bit of input uh, info for the opening move and how uh, on the surface defensive a certain play is. That is why it has a play of Legier for 70 uh, at a higher valuation than the 72 point um, counterparts because it doesn't expose a vowel. Uh, so it understands the, uh, the defense that people like to uh, provide on their opening play by not opening uh, any double letter scores next to vowels. But it's a very, uh, it's a very, how would you call it, vacuous um, or transparent uh, methodology that's used to determine this. And um, it's, just a, it's just basically a rule of thumb thing. It's like a, an indication trying to make you think about positioning, really. Uh, I would say that um, the 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 uh, positions are all very close, the seventy point ones and the seventy two point ones, and it's always good to not leave your opponent with uh, overlapping plays that score well. Uh, but I decided to take the points here because this is a content play. <laughs> um, and why is it a content play? Because of this ledge year. Um, so I really like the idea of setting up an F, uh, of course, it's definitely not like the optimal placement, uh, of the play of Ledger, but it's just always fun to set up a fun hook. Um, and it's worked, it's worked for me a lot. So I'm not saying goodbye to content plays anytime soon. Um, even if they're, they're not, they're kind of dubious anyways. Um, Sank was the response. For Mike, for 35. Um, I drew pretty poorly, which is fine because I have a 40 point, um, 40 point advantage here. I go ahead and play Dowie for, uh, for 18 here. I can also play O for 24. Uh, three eyes is a lot worse than two eyes, is a lot worse than one eye. Um, but it just gets worse and worse the number of eyes you have. So. I prefer to keep this leave. The valuation says it's um, it's around a five point difference. Um, actually, sorry, valuation says yeah, around a five point difference between these plays, which means that keeping three eyes is eleven points worse than keeping two, uh, which is a bit insane. Um, I can also exchange and try to go for the F quicker, but no rush. Um, and uh, live is the response from Mike. Um, I draw pretty good. 
Um, how many E's did I have? I had two E's here. So I draw into this rack, and I would just play Ale to try to maximize my score. Um, now drawing the F isn't nearly as powerful, but it's still it's still going to be good um, to draw an F. Uh, but now that live was played to kind of block, which my opponents do way too often after these content plays, um, the F the F is definitely dampened. Um, and here, I completely screw up. Uh, Mike lays down this word, and I absolutely hate the look of it. I mean, look at that queuing. Of course, I know what it's supposed to be, but I'm just like, there's no way it's not good. Uh, it's no, it's no way this word is good with an e and without an e. Like this looks completely ridiculous. It didn't make any sense to me Englishly. <laughs> But uh, yeah, once again, you can't really use logic, and often your logic is flawed in these situations. So queuing for 19, although there's only 19 points, you shouldn't really challenge a lot of 19-point plays. I was very confident this wasn't valid, and if it isn't valid, he's stuck with two U's and a G. So I was getting a lot of uh, a lot of um, value from this challenge, but unfortunately, uh, queuing is indeed a word, and I challenged. Um, yeah, so passed, and uh, Mike gets a golden opportunity to come back into the game, um, and he plays, oh, that's, that was his rack, he plays my for 18, so nothing, nothing too drastic yet, and uh, I also had a really good play through the end, um, luckily he didn't block it and joins for 56. And now I'm ahead again by large, large margin. So hey, no harm, no foul, right? Um, oops. Mike plays not for 18. Interestingly, not on top is more points because triple, triple letter of the of the K. It's very, uh, very valuable. Is there another spot to play not? Oh, it's possible he played not here. Not really sure. <laughs> not really sure. Oh yeah, that's where he played it. Um, played it through the end. Plays not, and uh, this is my rack. And I play Varas. I don't care uh, about my S so much. There are no S hooks on the board. Uh, again, it's kind of important to draw an F. Uh, neither of the two Fs have been seen yet. And uh, yeah, bigger fish to fry than just keeping an S unnecessarily when there are no S hooks. So I decided to take care of this S hook, the only S hook on the board that matters, and um, score some points in the process and keep HR, which is very nice uh, to keep scoring. Mike plays lofted. Um, he's staying in there. And yeah, at this point, I take a pretty humongous lead. Um, so I draw into expiry for 63. And uh, I'm definitely coasting here. Uh, but Mike fights back. He plays in Taylor. Pretty sure this is where he played it. In Taylor. Um, and yeah, here, what happened? I played chore. Okay, I could barely read my own handwriting there. Um, chore for 42. So keeping up the scoring, sort of nullifying his bingo score. My last two plays scored 105, his bingo scored 68. Um, just taking advantage of the spot he opened. Bat is his play for 24. Um, onto this and I play goat uh, for by far my biggest score in the position for 25. Uh, I'm not too worried about the ing uh, but that is definitely something to think about. I'm really just trying to draw an F here. Um, Mike draws and plays up for 18 and I still haven't drawn an S uh, an F. And I have this rack, like Ruby Go, and I'm like, okay, come on, I need to draw an F here. Um, 
Actually, I failed to mention he played Lofted earlier. I should have said, oh, wow, look, he played Lofted. But I totally forgot about this game where wherein he played off an F, and I'm like, wait a sec, okay. So maybe he doesn't see or no fledgier. Um, that's really good for me. But yeah, there's still one F to, to come, and I was hoping he wouldn't see it the second time around. And indeed, he doesn't and plays Ford. Maybe he did see it. Uh, I think, actually, I'm trying to remember what happened this game where afterwards I think he was like, wait, is Fledgy a word? Um, I didn't think it would be a word if you'd play Ledgier there. And I was like, yeah, I think it's a word. I think that's what happened. But hey, don't quote me on it. But he plays off the second F, uh, which it makes me happy because he can't, he doesn't score a million points with Ledgier, but also makes me sad because I wanted to score a million points with Ledgier. But sometimes the content play goes unused and uh, just have to sit there and, and not draw the tile you want. Um, anyways, I proceed to play Gnaw for 27, uh, keeping RAIS. This game is really, at this point, I'm up uh, 79. I'm scoring 27 here, leaving one tile in the bag. So I'm going up over 100. Um, so it seems very, very unlikely that I can uh, lose this game. I could get a few more points for Awa. That's potentially a bit better. Um, but yeah, I went ahead and played Gnaw, and I was trying to maybe bingo out. And uh, yeah, Mike uh, plays off one letter. He plays A uh, for 10. And I draw into the, uh, the Z or the Zed, since we're playing in the uh, Canadian National Tournament, and I have to block everything. <laughs> so he has seven letters, he has an amazing, amazing rack, and uh, yeah, I uh, gotta really, got, gotta really block as much as I can here. I felt like I could block everything, but sometimes there are things you miss when, when there's a rack this potent out there, but I knew I had to play on the B column, um or block the b column in some way and i'm gonna see how long this takes championship player to solve while i save the game before i lose it uh, and zaire okay best play and doesn't allow any bingos back luckily um but um, he makes a really nice play here and plays, um, postman. Yeah, that's what he does. So that was one of the bingos he wanted to play, but he wasn't able to play it. Um, and I play Zaz and the game is over just like that. So 428 to 315 is the final score. Um, so unfortunately... My content play did not lead to any fun fun times on the uh, first rank here. But um, overall, not so solid game, given that I challenged queuing. But other than that, uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty easy drawing very well, drawing a bunch of very, very high-scoring plays and just maintaining a lead after opening with a bingo. It's pretty, uh, pretty much coasting uh, most of the time that you open with a bingo, so... Um, yeah, that was, that was that and, uh, more games to come, uh, potentially from the same tournament, but potentially not, uh, they might be, I might be uh, coming at you somewhat randomly, but as always, um, links for this tournament for a bunch of things that you might be wondering about are in the description below. And if there are any questions you have any feedback, as always, let me know. Um, sorry, it was a bit dark today. I decided I didn't want to turn my, uh, my room light on. I hope uh, you guys enjoy the extra dark mode <laughs> this time around. But if you don't, uh, let me know. <laughs> and I'll see you guys on the next episode.